put our focus on God this morning. Come with grateful hearts, amen. For every battle you've won without question, for every lie that you silenced with love, we acknowledge you in every victory, Almighty God. For every promise you kept in the valley, for every burden you lifted with ease, we have gathered with great expectation, Lord. We day but you made it and I'm so proud of you and you're here hello everybody watching online from home all of you that have kids and you're getting ready for school today and people already going to work come on give them a great hand I'm glad you made it way to get up and seek the Lord if you're catching this later it doesn't matter what time it is if you're on this right now this is on demand I'm glad you're praying hey give somebody a high five next to you and tell them good morning and it's good to see them and encourage them a minute One of the best things about the 21 days is how it teaches you to persist. Everything good in life takes time to grow. Come on, hear me, hear me what I'm saying this. Everything great in life takes time to grow. This is not a machine. We're not a mechanism. We are spiritual beings. This is a garden. This is something that God is trying to do in us to grow us. And you're just placing yourself in the presence of God. You're letting his Holy Spirit water you and and uh, grow you. And I, I know you're gonna grow some more today. One of the great joys of being a pastor is when you, when you get to stay somewhere for a really long time. I've been the pastor of this church for 24 years now. It's incredible. And I'm, I get to see what God does in people's lives. I get to 
I get to baptize uh, little uh, little kids and then watch them and get help them get married later and uh, watch people come to Christ and be baptized and see them progress and and I love it when people from this church uh, come up here and encourage you because you get to see what God is doing in people's lives and I'm committed to that my whole my whole rest of my life I'm just going to be committed to helping you guys grow and putting people in front of you who are just growing spiritually at a tremendous rate so it can inspire you so one of the, the one of the people I want to introduce to you this morning is a woman named Desiree Desiree Crook and uh, we actually went to school together when we were little kids in the island of St. Kitts. And God brought us back together here in Fishers, Indiana. I wanna give a shout out to her mom and dad who I know are watching in the island of St. Kitts this morning live, Denzel and Carol, members of our church that show up every week. Amazing men and women of God. Well, Desiree's gonna come and share God's word with you this morning. And um, you know, she has a regular job. She's just a normal person, you know, just like, just like everybody else in this room, but she's a woman of God and she has a word from the Lord you need to hear today. So put your hands together. Welcome Desiree Crook. Good morning. <clears throat> it was in spring of 2020 that the Lord said to me, Desiree, I'm taking you into your next. Little did I know that Heartland would be my next a year later and that I would have the honor of being under the shepherding of Pastor Darren and Pastor Lori. Thank you for seeing something in me. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to serve in this way and all that your family has come to mean to my family and I also want to give a shout out to my parents who are watching that had celebrated their 53rd anniversary yesterday so happy anniversary mom and dad all this year Pastor Darren has been in one of my absolute favorite series called Abide in Me and the main passage that he's been using is the same one that I'm gonna piggyback off of this morning coming from John 15 verses 5 to 7 I am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. If we go back really quick where it says, if you remain in me, some Bible translations use the word abide. And I'm telling you, eight months into this series, I cannot get past the definition of the word abide. It means to dwell, to remain, to be present, to be held, to be kept. Do you feel the intimacy in those words? To remain in him, to abide in him is not just a mere closeness. It is an attachment to God. In preparing for this assignment, I read somewhere that abiding addresses our posture and place. It asks the question, where are we in proximity to Christ? So as the series here goes on, Pastor Darren constantly challenges me to take stock of where I am in my relationship with God and how do I continue to abide. As I thought about God being the vine and our source and us being the branches and as I sat with the verse and allowed the Lord to minister to me so I could minister to you, I thought of my grandmother. We lost her last year's spring, but she had a green thumb, no question about it. Her garden was beyond beautiful. She spent hours tending to her plants and flowers, and it was the admiration of everyone around. I did not get that gift. You can ask anyone in St. Kitts about Sylvia Taylor's garden, and they'll tell you. Desiree has killed a cactus, a bamboo plant, and a bonsai tree, and those are supposed to be the hardest things to kill. But my dad got the gift, and I think I may have some pictures of his garden. I'm not sure if we have them. But growing up, I remember always seeing my grandmother cutting back her plants. And I used to wonder why she was cutting them back. 
instead of allowing them to grow. And as I grew up, I came to learn that she was pruning them. And by definition, she was trimming her plants by cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems to increase their growth and their fruitfulness. So she had to cut them back in order for them to flourish, in order to transform them into something more beautiful. In the same way, we too, like plants, have to be pruned. In order to be transformed into increased spiritual growth and fruitfulness, just like plants, our gardener, the Lord, has to cut back whatever is, whatever is in us in our lives that's hindering or inhibiting our spiritual growth, our strength, the spiritual health that we need to keep us attached to our source, to the vine. Our anger needs to be pruned. Unforgiveness needs to be pruned. Judgmental attitudes need to be pruned. Pride needs to be pruned. Shame and self-condemnation need to be pruned. Worry and anxiety needs to be pruned. The list is endless. But because what happens when we resist God, God's pruning, we, the branches, die. Not a physical death, but we stop growing and maturing in Christ. And we become detached from the vine and eventually fall off useless. You know like we do in real life, that all the dead branches in our yard, we gather them up and we throw them in the trash or we burn them. Just like the Bible verse says, apart from me, apart from him, detached from the vine, we can do nothing. A few years ago, I went through a really rough patch in my life. It was by far one of the most painful times and definitely one of the lowest points. I was filled with anger and hurt, feelings of betrayal, rejection, misunderstanding, lies, gossip, everything. I would tell my friends that I felt like I was wearing a heavy cloak of hurt that was drowning me. And all I could do to keep my head above water was to hold on for dear life to the feet of Jesus. I remember my parents come to visit during that time and my mom had a dream just before they got here and I don't remember all the details of her dream but I remember that in it the Lord said to her she is going through the Bering Sea right now but she will be fine. They had no idea that that was for me. But if you know anything about the Bering Sea it's one of the roughest deepest seas and true to his word I was totally fine because despite how difficult that season was, it was also the season of the most spiritual growth and development for me in my whole entire life. Why? Because after revelation from a close friend of mine, I started to pray, God, show me me. And I know it's not grammatically correct, but it became what started God's pruning in my life and propelled me to who I am and where I am spiritually today. Did it feel good when God showed me the ugly things? Nope. And sometimes his, prone, his pruning was downright painful. But I knew that he only wanted the best for me. And working those things out of me is what was best. I still pray that prayer. And I still have things that God is pruning out of me. But I'm no longer afraid of the pruning process. Because his pruning has continued to transform me. And helps me to remain and to abide and to stay attached to the vine. So as we prepare to enter into our time of prayer, I want to challenge you to take a few minutes of personal time with God this morning and ask him, Lord, what are you trying to prune in me? What do you need to cut away so that I can grow and I can flourish and trans be transformed into you have, who you have purposed me to be? And I promise as you ask him this question and be still just for a moment and listen, he will answer you. And his heart is always to do a deeper work in you because he loves you. So we're going to begin to pray to him right now. Once you're done with your private time and individual prayer, remember to grab prayer cards up front, pray over the post-its on the wall, and then we'll gather back together shortly. I've been held in your hands from the 
the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, all I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my
Great is your faithfulness 
There is one who's stronger. Yeah. Hard pressed on each side, we will not lose sight of the one who's great. Come on, let's sing that out. One name, one name, one name holds everything.
great things you did When did I throw away faith for the impossible How did I start to believe That you weren't sufficient for me Why do I talk myself out of sin to deny what the Lord can do. I love that phrase. I'm glad somebody finally wrote it down and put it in a song because we do it all the time. I mean, we are, you know, pride is such an awful hindrance to the work of the Holy Spirit. And so just think about how often we, we make excuses or we deny what God can do, you know? One of the great scriptures in the Bible is God takes foolish things to confound the wise. He always picks the opposite. So he picks you know, uneducated fishermen to be his disciples, to confound everybody. And God chooses women. In that culture, women were nothing. And he uses women over and over and over again. And there's still to this day so many people who want to deny what a woman can do for God. And I just want to tell you, God's Holy Spirit working through women. You know, you know one of the amazing things is, as we come to this table of the Lord again, so get out this communion. On all those stations of the cross, Jesus is enduring pain, he's enduring pain, he's enduring ridicule, he's enduring suffering, false accusations, the government knows he's innocent and flogs him anyway, it's just awful. But you get to that ninth station of the cross and there are women there who are weeping over Jesus. And it's just a remarkable little thing that God sent some women along to say, Jesus, we see you and we care 
And God puts them right into the story. And Jesus has the presence of mind to speak to them and talk to them back and thank them and, and even, even say he's thinking about them and what future generations are going to face. Um, God takes foolish things or takes things that nobody else would expect. So every little girl in this room and every woman in this room and everybody who would say, well, God can't use me. God can use anybody. It's not our flesh anyway. It's the Holy Spirit that works inside of us. And some of you have a problem with that. You know, guess what? I'm 54 now. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I have, I've got a praying mom who, I'm here today because of her and her prayers. And I've got a praying wife. And I've got uh, a sister in Desiree who came up here a moment ago and gave you guys a world-class message in a short amount of time that was so biblical and so clear that the Holy Spirit used in my life all day today. I just want to thank God for seeing things inside of us. When he went to the cross, he still saw potential in people. When he comes off, off of his resurrection, the first person he says, the first person he meets is a woman, and he says, go, go preach to my, my brothers and tell them that I've risen from the dead. I just was so moved by this today. Take out this piece of bread. Lord, thank you for being so different you're so defined, you're so different than anything we would think. And Lord, you use people. You said you would pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. And Lord, thank you for using young people and using old people. And thank you for using white people and black people and brown people and everybody. You, you, you see us as people all made in your image. You, you made the male and female in the image of God. And you see the potential in all of us. And you died for our sins equally. And you equally want to use us to fulfill your purpose. I praise you for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross not only for forgiving all of our sins, Lord, but for promising the Holy Spirit. Let's just eat this bread and thank God for Jesus today. I thank you, Lord, for the symbol of your life, this blood, that, that your Holy Spirit, it's not just it's not just liquid or just a thing to remember. I just believe that today as I drink this cup again, you're filling me with your spirit. Come on, ask God to do that. Fill me with your spirit of life. Men, women, young girls, boys, teenagers, the Holy Spirit can fill you as much as any man or any older person. We receive you today, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us. Lord God, I pray in these next few moments, that you would move in this place in a powerful way. Touch the lives of your people. Move through these prayers. Let us experience you. We come to you and we present our prayer request before you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, you guys. Come on out here and come lead us in prayer. Desiree, you did a great job today, by the way. I'm so proud of you. Come here. Introduce, introduce who's praying for us. <laughs> the tall, very tall young person next to me is my niece. I am so proud of her. You guys have probably known her from her um, athletic gift and talents. But as a family, we do love her so much. And Don't say that. What, what, tell her what she does. <laughs> she high jumps. She long jumps. She runs track. I'm not sure what she doesn't do. Um, she has several records at Heritage Christian, um, including breaking her own mother's records. Um, she has been to the Junior Olympics, um, where she plays second. And she is... Junior Olympics. <laughs> yes, the Junior Olympics. And, um, and you'll see her in LA in 2028. I just wanted you all to know who's about to pray. But you know what's better than all of that? This young lady loves Jesus with all of her heart. As if all that wasn't enough, God has, God has chosen her today to come pray for you. So you go. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, our Father in heaven, I come before you today with a humble heart. I am grateful for the life you have given us. You are merciful and loving. Thank you for your amazing power and work in all of our lives. Thank you for your goodness and blessings over all of us. 
Thank you for bringing us hope during the toughest times. We praise you for allowing everyone to be here today and worship and glorify your name this morning. It is beyond amazing to see the amount of people on fire for you. I pray you keep moving in each one of these people's lives. I want to pray over all these post-it notes on the wall today. I want everyone to understand the power of the name of Jesus Christ. With him, all things are possible. I pray that anyone who needs healing, you would just lay your hand upon them, Lord. Let them know that you are with them every step of the way and love them so much. I want to especially acknowledge every name on this wall of people who need a relationship with you, Lord. I pray that thou would understand that a relationship with you is important. You are a good, good father. Lord, I pray that you bring people into their lives and show them the goodness of your name. Thank you for all the students that are here this morning. I pray that each and every one of them knows how amazing it is that they are here this morning worshiping your name. Continue to let us all grow in our relationship with you. Thank you for the word you brought to us this morning. I pray for all of those who have really received this message in their hearts today. Help us to all apply it to our lives, not just while we are here in the building, but let it be in effect when we walk out of those doors today. Yes, Lord. The spark we all have in our hearts this morning, let it continue to grow to a fire as we go through our day, Lord. As we leave here and go on with our day, let people see you through us. Let others see there is something different about the way we carry ourselves and live our lives. I pray your love would shine through every single one of us today. Lay your hand of blessings upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am so proud. God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise for Father, you alone are worthy. We thank you this morning for the, very, for the very breath that we breathe. We thank you, God, that you've given us the opportunity to come here this morning to worship you and to hear the word that you would have for us. Father God, this morning we say, I surrender all. We say, God, we open our hearts, we open our minds to whatever you have to do in us, to whatever you have to work in and out through us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We lay those things down, God, because we trust that you know what is best. And Father God, more than anything, we want to be all that you would have us to be, all that you would purpose for us to do, all, Father God, that you said before we were born, this is what I have for them to do, Father God, so we open ourselves to that. God, as we go through our day, we're asking you to bless us. We're asking you to give us every opportunity to show you to others, to let your light shine through us, to let your love, Father God, show through us. And Father God, as we go through the rest of this week, we're asking you to strengthen us for the rest of the 21 days of prayer because we need you and we will come back every morning to get more and more and more of you, God. All these things we ask in your name and the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. What a great morning. Wow. What a great day. I'm so glad you came. Students, go have a great day today. Just go filled up with confidence. And, you know, you're not, you can be leaders today, not followers of the crowd. You can actually walk in and set the temperature of every room you walk in today. Be grateful. Be respectful. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be people of integrity. Go in with all the passion of God that you feel in this place today. And the rest of you, I see you. I see you older saints that show up every morning. You know, you've been coming every Saturday and every prayer. You know, you've been coming forever. So I don't want you to feel disrespected. I want you to know that you've been holding this place down in prayer for 20 years. And um, I thank you for that the generations are all here today. God bless you guys. Go have an amazing Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m.